using visual characterization methods for inspecting solar module anti-reflection coatings. In order to improve power production, most modules today have a 1 to 200 nanometer layer of porous silica or a similar material on top of the module glass. This coating works in two ways. First, it provides a more gradual index change from air to glass, thus reducing reflection. Second, the thickness of the coating is tuned to produce destructive interference for a wide range of visible wavelengths. On the left side is a plot showing the theoretical reflection spectra for a layer of porous silicon glass. The reflection spectra show a characteristic reflection dip where the center of the dip depends on the coating thickness. We can then compare to the right-hand plot where reflection spectra were taken experimentally at 45 degrees angles of incidence, showing a clear spectral reflection dip at around 600 nanometers for a module with an anti-reflection coating. In contrast, the module without any anti-reflection coating shows a nearly flat reflection spectrum. The PV community has been interested in measuring how long anti-reflection coatings last in the field. On the right are the results of a study by Miller et al. showing that anti-reflection coating degradation can be large after just one year of aging. In this experiment, the authors prepared glass coupons with different anti-reflection coatings and field aged them in Dubai for one year. The different coatings showed a large spread in performance loss over one year. Some coatings showed a near complete loss. Unfortunately, hemispherical transmittance can't be measured on assembled modules. The PV community would therefore benefit greatly from a, for, from a method for quantifying anti-reflection coating performance on fully assembled modules. Luckily, there is a way. The reflected color depends crucially on the coating thickness. On the left, I am showing the reflection spectrum from anti-reflection coatings of various thicknesses. The plot color is the color the sample would appear if a white light, a white LED, were reflected from the sample. Color calculations like this aren't perfect because perceived color varies depending on ambient lighting and other factors. However, the general trend is accurate. Full thickness coatings are expected to appear blue. Magenta and yellow coatings imply increasing levels of degradation. Finally, white reflection denotes either a fully degraded coating or that no coating is present. This color is clearly visible by eye with a flashlight. Here I am shining a flashlight on this module and on a white piece of paper for color reference. Notice that the reflection from this module is blue compared to the white reflection from the paper. In order to record the measurement, I took a picture with a standard DSLR camera. I just want to pause here to emphasize how useful this is. Anti-reflection coatings and coating degradation can be identified using just a flashlight and the human eye. This would be an excellent addition to any field inspection of PV modules. To demonstrate the ease and utility of this method, I surveyed modules in the Intersolar 2020 exhibition. I walked around the exhibit floor using a keychain flashlight and a cell phone camera. About 18 out of 20 modules surveyed showed a clear blue reflection, which confirms the presence of anti-reflection coating. The only full-size module showing a white reflection was the first solar module. I also noticed that the backside of bifacial modules do not have anti-reflection coatings. So in conclusion, we'd approximate that over 90% of high-performance modules produced today have anti-reflection coatings. Now these cell phone images aren't that great, but the idea can be improved by building a portable imaging microscope. This optical setup images the reflection of a white LED from the PV module. We use a USB-powered LED and an RGB CMOS camera. The total cost of this setup is around 2500 but a second generation could be cheaper and improved in a number of ways. In any case, when placed on a PV module, we get images like these. The small magnification is still able to resolve the texture of the rolled glass. We can also clearly see the color difference between a module without an ARC showing white reflection and a module with an ARC which shows blue reflection. As a further confirmation of the presence of an anti-reflection coating, we can inspect the dependence of reflected color on angle of incidence. These plots show the theoretical reflection spectrum from a thin film of porous silicon glass and how that spectrum changes with angle of inc incidence. 
Similarly to before, the plot color here is the color the sample would appear when illuminated with a white LED. Now if we take an image of the specular reflection at near normal incidence, we find a deep blue color in agreement with the predicted color. At 45 degrees angles of incidence, we notice more magenta highlights occurring in the image. The color in the image is not uniform because the glass is not flat, and the setup collects light from a small range of different angles of incidence. At even higher angles of incidence, for example 60 degrees, we see that the magenta tones are joined by yellow highlights. This is, in, this is also in agreement with the expected dependence of reflected color on angle of incidence. In contrast, for a module without an anti-reflection coating, the reflected color at all angles is white. I should mention that the camera color settings for all these images is the same. Next, I want to give an example of how we can use this imaging method to inspect a module for anti-reflection coating degradation. Here we are studying a PV module that has been field aged at NREL for 13 years. The module was never cleaned intentionally. Most of the module still looks like the left image with a deep blue color. By comparing to the spectral reflection curve measurement in the upper right hand corner, this anti-reflection coating still creates a power enhancement of about 2.9% after 13 years. This is in general an excellently preserved coating. However, at the far bottom edge of the module, where soiling is most intense, a significant amount of ARC degradation is visible. We see some locations with blue reflection, which means full coating thickness. However, we see other regions with magenta yellow, and yellow reflection. These locations have significant anti-reflection coating degradation. Further, there are even some locations with white reflection, indicating full anti-reflection coating removal. I would emphasize that the vast majority of this module has blue reflection, so in general this is a minimally degraded coating. However, this example does lead us to say that heavy soiling appears to accelerate degradation. You might ask, what else causes coating degradation? There are many solutions for module cleaning which typically involve rotary nylon brushes, either accompanied by water or not. There's a good question of how long modules last with these types of cleaning methods. There's a wide variety of cleaning frequencies in PV power plants. Many power plants don't get any cleaning at all, but the ones that do in the U.S. typically clean around one to two times per year. Let's zoom in a little more and inspect the microscope images. We see some scratches where the reflective color goes from light blue outside the scratch to orange or yellow inside the scratch. This demonstrates that coating loss can occur due to abrasion by particles as the module is wiped during cleaning. In addition, we notice that the surface of the glass is a light blue, magenta, or orange color, indicating that the coating has been uniformly degraded. Lastly, I want to share some initial results showing how these scratches arise. This is an artificial abrasion test where I applied some dirty water to a cord PV module and brush the sample 10 to 20 times with a medium soft nylon brush. This is attempting to simulate a wet module clean. And here's the results. After 18 wet cleaning cycles, so that's 18 applications of dirt and about 10 to 20 brush strokes per cycle, we found a significant degradation of the anti-reflection coating. You can see in the images to the right that the deep blue color has been removed and multiple scratches are visible in the module. Using spectral reflection, we find that about 0.5% absolute power loss has occurred due to these cleaning cycles. The main conclusion from this artificial abrasion test it is, is that it is very easy and very quick to damage a, a module's interreflection coating by cleaning. Zooming in a little further on the abraded sample, we can observe that in the scratches, the coating has changed color to yellow. This implies that the coating loss is near complete in these scratches. Other scratches appear dark because light reflected from the sample is not scattered into the camera lens. So we've covered a lot of topics on anti-reflection coatings, and I want to briefly summarize the results. First, anti-reflection coatings can be identified with inexpensive equipment, just a flashlight in the human eye or a camera. They are identified by a blue reflection at near-normal angle of incidence. 
This technique should gain widespread use for field inspection of PV modules since it is very easy to perform and doesn't require specialized equipment. Using these techniques, we found that coatings degrade in several ways, typically a combination of uniform coating thickness loss and deep scratches with very high coating loss. In preliminary studies, we've identified several causes of coating degradation, particularly heavy soiling present at the bottom of edge of modules and cleaning dirt off the modules. We found a widespread in coating longevity depending on the type of coating and the module weathering history. Thanks for listening and please contact me if you have any questions.